So, before I show you the beauty, I gotta talk about the case. This is a nice TKL hard shell case. It's got a nice fuzzy interior with padding and a real nice pocket that's deep to hold all your stuff. It's got a channel for your neck to sit in and a real thick fuzzy padded spot there for the pot of your banjo. Real high quality case there with one, two, three, four, five locks on it. Um, and you can put a padlock on there if you want to. So there's that case. Now let's get to the good stuff here, all right? Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. All right, I've got a new banjo to review for you. This is a Bart Ryder Standard. Um, I've been wanting one of these for a long time and I finally pulled the trigger on one. Um, I, I heard something long ago where Bart had said he only set out to make 5,000 of these uh, banjos and w I, this one is number 4780 so I thought you know I had better get cracking if I'm gonna get one of these before he quits making them so um, I think he's in the 4800s somewhere right now I got this from a shop up in Michigan called Spruce Tree Music had a real good experience uh, with Will there, so um, if you want to check them out, I'll put their website down below. But um, now, things that I've already done to this is I slapped on my uh, armrest here, and uh, this is a Neckville Comfort Bevel armrest, and I slapped on my <laughs> compensated bridge that I like, and my set of strings that I like. But um, I'm going to go through it here for you. First, let's get the money shots. This is an ebony veneer over the headstock. It's got a beautiful stripe in it. And an ebony fingerboard on top of a mahogany neck. Just can't get all the color that's in this. I've oiled the fretboard as well. Um, Let's go through the specs of it here in just a second. But it's a beauty. All right. All right, so let me go through the specs on it and then we'll get some sound samples here for you. Um, I wrote everything down so I make sure I did it right. Uh, we've got a mahogany neck. Now the neck has a rounded V. That's what I would call it. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute because that's very interesting. Um, it's got an ebony fingerboard and headstock veneer. It's got the dot and star inlay. It's got 17 um, nickel silver frets. It's got a two-ply maple half-inch thickness uh, rim there, or pot. It's got a walnut heel cap that's dyed. It's got an 11-inch pot. It's got an elite amber head on there. It's got a no-knot tailpiece. And it's got 24 brackets. Um, it's a 26 and a quarter inch scale. It's got a bone nut and it's got a maple dowel stick. Um, now, one thing to note is with these um, higher end banjos, my experience dealing with the Pisca and this is that you, uh, you don't get a wrench, an adjustment wrench. Now I wish they would throw one in there because I think they should, but you can get a wrench for it uh, at Stumac and other places like that, but they're kind of pricey. I'll give you a little trick here. You can go down to your local hardware store, in my case it was Home Depot, and you get a 5 sixteenths deep well socket, okay? So that means it goes down deep because you've got to get past the little nut there 
to get down and actually, I mean, you got to get way down to here to do your adjustment to tighten the head. Um, and you're going to want a wrench. So make sure you pick one of those up. Now, a lot of them are 5 16 on the higher end banjos. Um, the cheaper banjos, or I shouldn't say cheaper, the different models of banjos, um, they have a quarter inch. Um, another thing too is if you can only find millimeters instead of the uh, regular inches, an eight millimeter deep well socket would work. Okay, so and this was like four bucks instead of twenty bucks um, with shipping and everything from Stumac, and I, I don't fault them for that or anything like that. But I'm on a budget, so it fits perfectly and does all the adjustment I needed. So. Um, when they shipped it, I believe that they loosened it because I like it kind of tight. So I tightened her up. And um, anyway, let me go back to the neck, okay? Um, I've never felt a neck like this. And I just immediately fell in love with it. It is what I would call a rounded V. Now, if we look right here, what do we have at the base of our thumb? We have a rounded V and uh, wow it just really fits okay so in my other banjo experiences uh, gold tone has a very narrow neck very narrow nut width and a rounded flat not flat but a thin rounded neck completely rounded okay not any sort of a V okay and very narrow this is wider. I'll put the exact dimension down below, but I don't, it wasn't listed on the website. Um, this is wider than the nut width on gold tones for the most part. Um, I haven't touched every gold tone there is, but the ones that I have, they have a very narrow nut width. Um, the Pisca had what I would call a wide nut width. Wide, wide. Uh, a lot wider than this. I have hummingbirds visiting. They're so beautiful. But anyway, a lot wider than this. It was, for me, it was almost too wide. I was able to play it just fine, but it was almost a little bit too wide. Um, this is more in between the two, I would say. And the piskin neck was also rounded, but thicker than the gold tone neck. So beefier, okay? Now this is a beefy neck, but that V makes it more comfortable in for my size hand than the Pisca. The Pisca was rounded and beefier altogether, you know, sort of like that. Whereas this is sort of V'd. So it takes out some of the some of the beef there, I guess you'd say. And it just sort of fits my hand better. Um, you can't really it doesn't really show up on camera. I wish I wish I could illustrate for you. But it doesn't really show up on camera. Anyhow, I really like it. Um, one more uh, one more change I do plan to make to this is to change out the ivory tuning buttons uh, to ebony. Um, but of course that that's just looks. It doesn't affect the sound in any way. Um, I like to play muted down. This has a brass tone ring in it, so it will put out some volume. But I like to play muted down because I like the more thunky sound. But muted down a little bit but and I do that with every banjo that I have it's not it's a very common thing oh and I also got <laughs> I got spruce tree music to install two spikes for me at the seventh and the ninth and uh, so I went down from my normal five spikes that I would get down to two and I'm just gonna tune fine-tune the rest with my tuning peg so there we go let's hear it
to say something else about um, your banjo's sound, okay? Two things that you have, three things, oh my goodness, three things that you totally have control over that greatly affect the sound of your banjo are number one, your head tension, okay? And there's nothing wrong with playing around with this. You just need to be to use caution. You don't take it and just crank the heck out of each one. You only do a quarter turn, no more than a quarter turn at a time. And you do it in such a way, like if I would start here on this side of your dowel stick, I would start here and then here would be my next one, right? Okay. And then if I went to the second one, I'd go to the second one down here and just following around tightening as we go or loosening depending on the sound you want okay so tightness looseness of your head makes a huge difference another thing that makes a huge difference about the head is the type of material i plan to someday probably get a fiber skin head um, and possibly even a goat skin head for this uh, to explore different sounds and that is something you can do pretty inexpensively and you can do the work yourself don't be afraid of it it's something you can totally do um, but that can greatly affect the sound of your banjo so it's not like you have to run out and get a brand new banjo every five minutes okay um, you can you can do things like this okay another thing you can, you have complete control over is your bridge try out different materials try out a compensated one try out different things give them some time to become resonant. Woods over time will, I don't know the term for it, but I guess warm up or, um, so like when somebody's in a rare guitar shop and they play one of those 1930s Martins and the sound that comes out of that, it's just amazing. Um, obviously we're not going to wait 60 years, but the point is over time wood develops. Um, so that's your second thing that you can change. Now the third thing, and, and you know, it's also inexpensive to get a different bridge, okay, to try out different bridges. So the head, the bridge, and the third thing is the strings, and people always underestimate the strings, okay? Strings can make a huge difference in the sound of your instrument, on any instrument, okay? So you can try different steel strings, phosphor bronze strings. You can try nickel strings. You can try different weights of strings and gauges. Um, I myself like a medium gauge set with a phosphor bronze fourth string. I gotta have that phosphor bronze on the fourth or it sounds bad to me. Um, I just love that sound, okay? Um, and uh, different materials also, you know, the, um, the nylon strings, try some of those out. They're not my type of sound. That's not what I'm looking for, so I don't really use those. I use steel strings. Um, but try it out. It's cheap, and um, yeah, you can make some different sounds for not a big investment into your instrument, okay? So I want you to keep in mind these things um, before you go out and buy a brand new banjo, you know? It's always fun to get a, a new instrument, but just keep in mind the head, the bridge, and the strings. Do some of those. Swap some of those out. Um, if you're going to go buy a head, they have different heights. Uh, they call it like a low crown, a medium crown, and a high crown. With that, you're going to have to just contact the company. Like if you're getting them from elderly or wherever you're getting them from, your head. Just tell them what kind of banjo you have. You know, make and model and all that good stuff. And they'll tell you what you need, okay? And they'll be happy to help you with that, I'm sure. Um, Janet Davis, all of them. Okay, they're all great. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. But I, I wanted to keep this, of course, I've gone on, I've rambled on now. But I, I didn't want to make too long of a video here. But I wanted to review this baby that I've always wanted. Um, you know, <laughs> funny story, if you want to watch it, I guess it's not funny. But here's a story for you if you want to uh hang around longer for my video um originally i wanted a bart rider banjo um they were more expensive than you know uh i guess i would say beginner level banjos so i never got one and um 
the reason is simply because the person who taught me how to play was playing one and the sound that she got from that woo um i believe hers was a bart rider special though and not a standard because it's uh got the maple color um and it's honey colored i guess you'd say um so i believe hers is a special but ever ever since uh i took that class and learned from uh Miss Aubrey Atwater. Just a week long claw hammer class. That's the only instruction I've had. Um, it was a group class, but ever since then I've thought, you know, I want one of those banjos. The sound coming out of that thing. And you know, we all know, or at least you should know, that sound has to do with a lot of different things. And part of it is this and this. Um, so if this and this aren't doing good things, you're not going to get good sound out of any banjo, no matter what is going on, you know, but you kind of have those sentimental things and stuff like that that pops up. So I'm thrilled to have one of these and, um, I did sell my Pisca in order to get this and I'm totally okay with that because I wanted to explore different sounds and, uh, you know, and do that. So, um... All right, that's been my review of, of my Bart Rider standard. I've got a hummingbird that keeps coming. And um, I might try to get a little bit of footage. I got some footage yesterday of one, but I, I might try to get some today too. They're beautiful little creatures. And they have hundreds of different species of hummingbird. I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but there are hundreds like 400 or more. I'm going to look that up. I'm going to Google that and I'm going to put it down here because that's important information, okay? But um, if you stuck with me this long, you really must be a true fan of mine. <laughs> Thank you very much. But um, all right, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm thrilled to have this and you'll be seeing a lot of this um, in upcoming videos. And before I go, I always want to remind you that Jesus loves you. Bye-bye, y'all.